So there's a couple of model query builder macros that I just keep returning back to that I thought I'd share today. And if you all have any favorites of your own, be sure to let me know down in the comments. Before we dive in, let me go ahead and set the tone and define what exactly it is that we're extending with these macros. Specifically, we're gonna be extending the model query builder macro. So that is whenever you initiate a query builder off of your model. So here we have a user model, we're calling query. Macros here are going to allow us to define our own methods to call after this. So say we had a macro called where true, we could just call our where true macro there and it would do what it needs to do. So a set of these are what we're going to be defining here today. I've already gone ahead and set this project up. We just have a model query builders macro provider, which is resolving the model query builder binding from the Adonis Lucid database namespace. And then we also have a context.ts file within this provider folder as well, which is declaring the module at IFC Adonis Lucid ORM so that we can extend this namespace with our interface of model query builder contract, which takes in the model, which extends the Lucid model, gives us back a result of the instance type of the model in itself. And right here is where we're going to be defining the individual macro TypeScript definitions. So as I had given the example before, let's go ahead and define where true as our first macro because that's one of the ones that I keep returning back to. So what we'll do here is we'll call model query builder. There is a macro function off of this then we give it the name. So in this case, it's going to be where true. The second argument here will be our macro function. You want this to be a scoped function. So no arrow functions here. You want this to have its own instance of this from the macro itself because this will be the model query builder in itself. One for function here, we can go ahead and take in a call name argument. That'll be a type string. And then we can go ahead and return this. This is the model query builder in itself. So we can extend off of it an additional where statement, apply it towards that column name that's provided in, and then just define the value as true. While we're here, let's also define the inverse side of that. So where false. So we can take this, flip it to where false, and set this to false. So let's go ahead and dive into the context here and define the TypeScript definition for this. So all we need to do here is add the method name. So where true, provide that it's a function, define the actual argument type here. So it's a column name of type string and then define what it returns, which in this case is going to be an instance of this, which is the model itself. We we'll wanna do the exact same thing for where false, column name, string, this. Give that a save. Let's go ahead and jump back up to our controller here where we have a model query builder for our user and we could just define where true. Now there's really no Boolean value on our user in itself, uh, but say there was, we could do where true published if this was a post, and then that would return back all users where published is true in the database, or we could do where false as well. And since this is a macro in itself that extends and returns the instance of the query builder, we can extend off of this additional query statements just like normal. So there's our first macro out of the way. We have where true and where false. Another one that I find super useful is called any. So let's define model query builder dot macro and define the name here as any. For this one, we aren't going to be returning an instance of the query builder. So we'll want to do async function. You don't necessarily need an argument for this one, but what I like to do is define the primary key here of string, default that to ID or whatever your default is for your application. And then we can use that primary key to just select to make the query just run a little bit quicker. And what we we'll wanna do is actually get back the results within this macro. So we can do const results equals await this, and then we can select that primary key and then just return back a Boolean of whether or not the results.length is greater than zero. So if the results.length is greater than zero, we do indeed have any. If it's false, then we don't have any. And then for the context side of this, what we would do is define this as any, the argument here is primary key of type string. And since this isn't returning back an instance of the query builder, this would instead be a promise of type Boolean and that primary key should be optional there as well. All right, so now we can actually chain this off of any model query builder that we have as just dot any at the end of the query. And what it will do is it will return back whether or not there are any records matching our query. So user here in this case is going to be a Boolean instead of the actual user record. So we can give this a save, I actually have this running, open this up in the browser. Let me go ahead and refresh this here. And you can see user there is true. Now, if we were to change this, so we could do dot where ID equals 500. I don't believe there's any users with an ID of 500 in this database. Give that a refresh and you can see now it's false. So that macro is really just gonna save you a little bit of additional work here within your controller or service or wherever you're building this query out to determine whether or not any records exist for the query. On the same front here as any, this also works great for aggregates. So we could do say a model query builder macro for select count async function and then let's go ahead and do const result equals await this. And then we'll just want to count up the records. We can count star as total here. And then go ahead and return. Now, the way that you return this 
it's up to you. Um, I return back a big int. I believe this is shown somewhere in the Adonis.js documentation, actually for the macros here in itself as an example. But we can return big int here as result at, we can grab that first result there, dot extras dot total. And then on the context side of this, this would be select count, and this would return back a promise of big int or whatever type it is that you're returning there. Jump back into our controller and let's take a look at this one. So instead we can do dot select count here. So let's go ahead and give that a save. Jump back into our browser, give this a refresh, and we should see zero. Whoops, I have a typo. I typed extras instead of extras. Let me go fix that up real quick. Right in here, that should be an R right there. Let's give that a save. Jump back in here, refresh. There we go. Yep, so now we have zero. Since it's a big and it's going to come back looking like a string. Um, so that is correct there. Let's go ahead and jump back into that controller, get rid of that where statement. Let's just count all of the records. There we go. And there we go, so now we get three. So there is select count. You can also do the exact same thing there with any other aggregate. Um, so you can do select sum, um, something of the sort like that with really any other aggregate that the model query builder supports. There's been a few instances where I really only care about getting back IDs uh, from the result set. So let's go ahead and define one for that. So model query builder dot macro select IDs, async function, Taking the primary key as string, default that to ID or whatever the primary key default is within your project. We want to get back those results. So const results equals await this. We can go ahead and select that primary key column just to make our query run a little bit quicker and exclude those extra columns that we don't need or care about. And let's go ahead and return results. We can map over it as result, result, and just grab that primary key. Give that a save. Let's jump back into our context. This one will be select IDs, primary key, string. That should be optional. And this will return back a promise of a number array. Go ahead and give that a save. And let's take a look at this one. So we can do select IDs there. Give that a save. Jump back into our browser here. Give that a refresh. And you can see now we get back user of 2, 3, and 4. This is just formatted for JSON, so it's not going to look like an actual array there, but it is indeed an array. So it's just returning back all of the IDs matching the query statement there. Again, just like the others, we can extend this with a where statement. So we can do where ID equals two, and we would just get back two there as an example here. And so there's actually a couple different variations of this particular one that I like to use. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and copy this one. That gets you back an array of IDs. You can also do a singular one that just returns you back the first ID that's matching the query. So we can change the name here to select ID, change result to result, suffix our query with first, and then let's go ahead and return. Let's check whether or not we have a result. If there is a result, then we can do result and then grab our primary key column. Give that a save, jump into our context here. And this one will instead be select ID with a primary key that's optional of type string. And that will return back a promise of a number, or I believe that would then be undefined if not. So we can give that a save there, jump back into our controller, change this to select ID. Since two was the first ID that came back prior, I would anticipate that to be the same here, and there it is. So there's another variation of that. If you definitely want to get back an ID, then you can change that to select ID or fail, similar to the first or fail uh, methods that the query builder already has in it. So select ID or fail here, just change first to first or fail. Um, then this or fail here would handle the error for us. If there were no matches within the query, we can then get rid of that result check and just return back result with the primary key there. Switch over to our context, select ID or fail and get rid of that or undefined out of that. Jump back into our example here and select ID or fail. And then we should get back to there as well. So there's a look at the various macros that I kind of keep with me throughout my Adonis.js project that I find most useful. Um, if you have any macros of your own that you find most useful, be sure to drop them down in the comments and I'd be really interested to see what you come up with. So thank you all for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed and I will see you all in the next one.